Hello and welcome to High Ground Gaming. This is Eric. This is a uh, I'm going to do an unboxing, another unboxing today. Well, sort of unboxing. Um, it's a game that we've again had on our radar for a while, and uh, it's an out of print game. Um, so it was, and not many copies of it came across on eBay. And when they were, they were seemed to be very expensive. Um, and those were just for even the used copies. There. Um, so while a new copy was outrageous, we couldn't really um, justify that. That was probably in the upwards of two bills anyway. Um, you know, at times we uh, we saw this copy that was on eBay, and uh, originally we looked at it and uh, said, "Okay, and that's another copy of it." And uh, we did a little research on the game, and uh, it was originally produced in two thousand and nine. Um, and uh, a lot of Stefan Feld's games, the designer here, um, received the reprint, um, you know, at the 10 year mark at 2019. So we kept waiting and looking around for that. And we didn't see anything. It didn't look like they were going to do any reprint of it. Um, while they did reprints of uh, In the Year of the Dragon, which is we have the 10th anniversary edition of that. Um, uh, Notre Dame, they have, we have a 10th anniversary edition of that. Um, of course, Trajan had a uh not a 10th anniversary edition but a, a reprint of that and of course his famous famous game the castles of burgundy had a uh had a new edition of that come out this year um and that was in i think 2011 when that came out so that was any e wasn't even 10 years um which is understandable but uh again after reading about um this game right here macau and uh seeing some very unique uh, mechanisms in the game. Um, you'll see that as we do it called the Windrose. Um, a lot of Stefan Feld's games have a unique um, uh, gimmick and or mechanic in it that uh, uh, draws people in. And uh, this one is the Windrose. But anyway, um, this is in this game we found on eBay. It's a uh, it's uh, ten years old. Um, however, um, while the outside here is uh you know has been opened and everything um as you'll see all the components on the inside were never played so it is a like new i would say a like new game an open box um new game i guess you could say um so or like new i guess you could say but uh the outside has a little bit of you know stickers whatever on it residue um and maybe a little dent in one of the corners that's it you barely can see it but uh, other than that, it's a uh, it's a, it's a brand new game, and uh, you know, so we we end up getting a, um, a a really good price. In fact, it went down a little bit before we ended up getting it. Um, so uh, so basically, a like new game or a new game, pretty much as far as components go, because when you play the game, you don't see the box. Um, but uh, yeah, a, uh, everything else is brand new inside. So. For a uh, a used price, pretty much the we've seen used games of it go for more than it did. But anyway, uh, enough of my babbling there. So let's get through the, to this unboxing here, so we don't have to take the plastic off because that's already been taken off. But we will uh, show you what's inside. Um, in fact, I think that don't, that's about the extent of the damage right there. <laughs> that little thing right there, and a little sticker residue on here, and uh, of course that residue right there, but. Not a big deal, but as you'll see here, everything else is brand spanking new. Um, so yeah, it's so player boards right here. Let me show you on the inside here. Again, not even nothing has been punched. Those are the wind roses right there, um, which is the mechanism in the game. Definitely a really cool mechanism. Uh, some of the goods tokens there and the coins on the right, and. Uh, not sure exactly. Oh, that those are your uh, negative tokens right there. If you, as you'll see on the back here, if you don't fulfill your contracts after a certain amount, you'll get negative points. So, and not the greatest component quality. Again, it's a it's a ten year old game, um, but a little thin, but nice nonetheless. Uh, again, another same thing when the wind rose and. The different goods tokens in the blue right here. 
get into the player board. So, oops, upside down player board. There you go, some more of the uh, penalty tokens. Um, well, this is interesting. Strips of the tokens here. Um, some of the goods, some more goods tokens. And penalty markers here. Uh, more coins and everything. So basically, pretty much is an unboxing. <laughs> I mean, everything else is brand new inside here, never been used, which is awesome. Because um, as you guys know, if you've watched any of my unboxings, that is my favorite, one of my favorite things to do is, well, is to later punch out all the uh, tokens and everything. So very pleased that I was able to get it, get this copy off of eBay. Um, well worth it. Again, paid a little extra for it, but uh, but definitely worth it for almost brand new copy. And these are your uh, instructions here. You're in English. So this was an English edition too. Um, there were, were a few copies on Board Game Geek. Um, in fact, Slicker Dips has a copy uh, that he did a run through with, but uh, he had to end up getting a Dutch version um, of it and just putting paste on. Um, on the cards because a lot of the cards were were written in and in, in you know Dutch so <laughs> from the Netherlands so uh so uh he had paste ups on those and even some of those weren't weren't totally done but this is a fully English copy as you'll see which is awesome um definitely there weren't any of these on even board game geek or even on eBay you rarely found it in English full English copy So here's the uh, rules right here inside. How you use the uh, wind roses. Some more rules. Again, mostly text. Not a lot of examples, unfortunately. But there are a good number of playthroughs on it anyway. Uh, like I said, Slicker Dips. Rado does one. Um, and I think there's a couple others out there too. Um, but yeah, not a lot of rules. It looks like it's, uh, is that 12 pages? No, not even 12 pages. Pages aren't even numbered. <laughs> so it's two, four, six, yeah, eight pages of rules. So not much, not much as far as the rules go. All right. And, uh, player board, which I'll set up and show you guys after that. Again, um, your die. Which you're gonna roll all six die every round, um, and I think there's 12, 12 rounds in the game. I want to say, um, but six die, and uh, you're gonna draft two of them, and the dies determine the number of actions you take in the future. So, for instance, if you take a three, that red three right there, you'll have three red actions to take, but it's not until three rounds in the future. Uh, the sixes. Um, You'll get six, you'll get more actions in the future, more action cubes, um, but you'll have to wait six rounds. So you have to plan ahead into the future. So that's what I really liked about this game. And then you get your little boats here. Looks like your little boats, which you're going to deliver the goods and stuff after you get them. So these are your, your die right there. And then all oh, tons and tons and tons of <laughs> colored... Uh, Tokens and everything. These these are action cubes, pretty much. I think that's what they're called. Um, so yeah, so you get tons of these. And even Rado mentioned that, you know, whenever he's looking for different colored tokens for games that he has, um, even prototypes that he gets, he comes to Macau to get them. So if for nothing else, we have tons of tons of colors of action cubes, which is awesome. All right, and uh, here are the. I'm not going to open these yet, just because <laughs> they've been sealed for. 10, year, or 10 years, so I'm going to try to leave them sealed until I first play them. Um, again, this is a not just your average game that you get brand new. It's a um, an old, almost like old new stock, um, which is awesome. So again, not too many copies of this floating in the wild, so it's, I'm definitely glad to get one of these. And uh, uh, if, if you've seen some of my other unboxings, you know I like Stefan Feld games. Um, we have a bunch of them, and uh, we're gonna have a bunch more to still get. So again, this one right here, just to give you an example, um, and this is a building right here. 
um, customs building. Uh, I think it's a building. Maybe not. Yeah, I think it is. I, I know these these mean something in here. Let's see if I can figure out what they what they mean again. So you have your your person buildings. You, I think you have your. Uh, let's see if I can figure out what it says here. Uh, cards. Let's see. Yeah, office cards, building cards, and person's cards. So I think these are office cards, actually. It makes sense with the scroll there. So basically, in order to activate this card, you need to have one red cube on your win rows there. Um, so you make sure you have a red cube. And then you can, uh, each round, you can return a red action cube and take a gold. I think that's a gold piece there. Um, so that's a lot. It gives you money. Um so that's one deck there, and then here's another deck. So this one is a little bit is a building card, as so you can see by the building in the corner there. And when, this is a little harder to activate. You need a, a blue cube, a um, purple cube, and a black cube. Um, it's a resonance, but it's an end game scoring thing. At the end of the game, you score one um, point for each of your activated buildings, including the including this resonance. So this is an end game scoring card. So Brand new in the decks here. We're definitely going to sleeve these, but this was nice to have here. Um, and then your insert inside here. Nice insert. But again, the box in very good shape, and uh, we normally go through the back of the box first, but uh, I didn't. I didn't this time because it was open. But uh, let me. Uh, let's see here. Let's go. Th let's go through and read this here. If we can. Voila. All right, so let's back it up here a little bit. Uh, let's see. I don't know if you can read that. Hopefully you can. So, all right, so this is basically a summary of the game, which we're kind of doing a little backwards, but that's okay. Macau, the mysterious harbor city on the south coast of China. Oh, I didn't know it was in China. Is a Portuguese trading center in the Far East at the end of the 17th century, so in the late 1600s. The players take on the roles of energetic adventurers who sought their fortunes in Macau. Whether as captain or governor, as craftsman or scholar, numerous exciting functions are offered the players. Who will use his various possible actions the wisest? Who will use the, his various possible actions the wisest? Who will have the best plan and can acquire the most prestige by the end of the game? So that's it pretty much. Uh, again, along with you know most Stefan Fell games, um, not heavy in theme. It's mostly mechanics. Um, but it is heavier than, I, uh, I mean, more of a theme than people, I think, give credit to. Um, each of the action cubes um, stand for different um, actions. You know, one's a building, one's a, uh, you know, like a uh, office. Um, cards tend to have the red colors. Um, and just each color is, is thematic. Um, although a lot of, although you get a lot of people, you know, they get lost in the mechanisms and don't, um, don't see the mechanics, but there are, are some, some good, uh, mechanics and some theme in it too. Again, not heavy theme, but enough to, uh, to make sense. So, all right. So that is the, the box there. Uh, let me, uh, set up the game board and I'll show you guys that. So, all right. So here is the game board here. Sorry for the shakiness. Um, Pretty much on the game board, you're going to have your uh, your little your city air quarter areas, your neighborhoods, and everything. And um, you're going to put your uh, goods tokens in each one of these areas here. Um, as you can see, these are the costs right here. These cost four red tokens, for whatever goods in there. And this will be random set up each time. You have your turn order track here, and then you finally you have your uh, your ships right here, and your ships you'll need to collect your goods and the second half of the phase of the half of the game is pretty much delivering your goods and you're going to get different bonuses for delivering to all these different ports in uh in europe um and actually across is it just europe yeah all in europe so you have barcelona marseille marseille marcel <laughs> genova uh lisboa Amsterdam, London, Hamburg. So that's pretty much what you're going to be doing. And uh, here, this is a really cool mechanism here. Each round, I think it's some kind of a tribute thing you're going to be able to do. 
Um, so you're going to set up cards and you're going to pay a certain amount of coins and you're going to get a certain amount of tribute or victory points for that. And like most good euros, you have your track around the edges here. Um, in the beginning of the game, I'm not going to get too much into this, but in the beginning of the game, um, you're setting up your cards and you're going to put office cards all around here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, six sets of cards. You're going to put two office cards in each one there. And then on the back end, you're going to have um, six more office cards. So you'll be, you'll be able to see um, some of the cards that are coming out um, ahead of you. So you'll be able to plan ahead for what cubes you're going to need for some of them. And then the other ones are going to be pretty much random off the uh, off the decks here. You're going to set them up and uh, pick four each round. Um, and again, depending upon how many players you have, you're always going to have six cards that come out every round. And uh, to, you have to have six cards to figure out your tribute. And then after that, um, in a two-player game, unfortunately, two of them go away and you have just a choice of four cards. And um, But in a regular three- and four-player game, you'll be able to pick, um, from I think, from all the cards, I believe. Um, so there is a little bit of randomness as far as that goes. Um, on your player board, which I mentioned before, you have um, five. Let's see, show you. Let's see here. You have your. Uh, you have your five contract. You take up to five contracts here, um, on your player board. But after, you, but if you don't put them out, your contracts out after that, then you'll start to you'll uh, you'll get negative um, points. Uh, you have to take those negative tokens, which I think I showed you earlier, which I did show you earlier. Um, and that's thematic too. That that means that you're not as good as um, managing your business affairs. So if you can't if you can't um, fulfill your contracts, you're going to get negative reputation, which is negative victory points, which makes sense. So everything in a game seems, from what I've seen in the playthrough, definitely has good thematic sense if you look into it, and it does make sense. Um, I guess they're called punish markers. So that's what they're called. Um, and then you have your token, you have your actions all right in here. Um, just to show you. Not going to go through anything, but um, just gives, gives a good round summary in here of what the round is, structure is like. And again, this is all in English, um, which is nice, being an English version. Um, so yeah, not a lot of iconography, I don't think, on the cards. There is some, but there's a lot of text, as you can see. Um, but I guess the, uh, the paste ups that slicker dips had on his, they had, uh, more iconography on it too, but you know, again, not necessary as long as it, if it's written in English, I can read it. So, so that is pretty much it. So that is Macau. We're definitely looking forward to getting this one to the table. Again, this one would be a, a gem in our collection here. Um, worth paying a little extra for, um, to play a game that is not very easy to get. So, uh. That's it. That's Macau. And uh, we were pleasantly surprised when we went to go pick this up from the post office that we had two other packages waiting for us there, too. Um, again, we still have Preda Porta, which we need to open. But I figured we'd do this one first because this was a special one. And um, this was, uh, you know, partially opened anyway. Um, but we have other games. We have uh, a Lovelace and Babbage, which is a um, uh, kind of a mathy game, mathy kind of filler game. And we also got the Chocolate Chocolate Factory, which is another game that we were um, we backed on Kickstarter too. So, uh, so lots of good stuff coming up. Um, so stay tuned for some more unboxings, and uh, you know, hopefully, we can get start doing some playthroughs of this on our channel. Um, definitely leading up to that, um, it's something we'd like to do. I noticed there are a lot of. Uh, aren't a lot of playthroughs on some of these games that we have and not a lot of solo playthroughs on some of these games. So we might do some like solo variants of some of these games as well as some multiplayer ones too. So thank you for joining me. It's been Eric from Higher Ground Gaming and we'll see you in the next unboxing video. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye now.